So Colin, in this short video, mm -hmm. we get a lot of guys asking us, what's it like to move to Ukraine? What are the pros and the cons? Is it complicated? Is it dangerous? Mm -hmm. All these kind of questions. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's talk about this. Oh, the John? biggest, the biggest dangerous thing I'm going to tell you about. Well, is our coffee's coming. Oh, oh yeah. cool. That's not dangerous. That's cool. <laughs> Very cool. So now that we have our hot cappuccino on this nipply October morning in Sumy, Ukraine, uh, let's get back into all the different um, aspects of how to immigrate to Ukraine. Mm. Uh, overall. What do you think? You've been here, you've been living in Sumi, Ukraine for four years. Yeah, yeah. Overall, what's your experience, Colin? Are you happy being here? Let's Absolutely. Start there. Uh -huh. Look, if I, if I wasn't happy here, I wouldn't still be here. <laughs> That's well, it. you would think that, but I know an expat that lives in Odessa, has lived there for 11 years, mm -hmm. and all he does is bitch. <laughs> so, I tell him, you should go back to America, but yeah. anyway, uh, I, I'm happy here too. Um, I think overall, you know, you have to have the personality uh, to be able to, not a whiner, complainer personality. You have to be really laid back. You have to be laid back. You can't mm. be too uh, capricious uh, and, and, and just be able to look at the good things and ignore uh, the bad things yeah. about you. Because yeah. right? there's, there's, a, there's a lot of downside, but I think there's more upside. Yeah. yeah. And my, my big thing is, if you're looking for your other half in Ukraine, it is a game changer to live here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I would be d as bold to say is you don't need us if you're going to move here. Yeah. You don't need match guarantee. Yeah. Uh, you don't need anybody if you're going to move here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> but it still depends on your capacity to make friends. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I will say um, you don't need us, but it's going to take you 10 times longer if you don't have a wingman, if you don't have somebody here that you can trust, and if you don't have a way of meeting genuine, sincere Ukrainian ladies because mm -hmm. they're tough to find. Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't know how to pick them up. We don't know how to, you know, <laughs> pick up Ukrainian women. We we think so much differently. Uh, there's so many do's and don'ts. So, so it's still still uh, a bit of a journey yeah. going to come here. But it is a game changer. Mm. It's an eye opener. An eye opener and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into uh, Colin. Um, the first thing is the the pros. It's cheaper. Oh yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Big well, look, I come from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's Canada. definitely cheaper. Uh, the rough math I do is it seems like everything is at least five times cheaper mm. uh -huh. uh, or more. Mm -hmm. Car insurance. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's crazy cheap. Yeah. That's like, I, I don't know, 500 times cheaper. Yeah. I mean, it's like 50, less than 50 bucks for car insurance for a year. Yeah. I mean, the insurance sucks, yeah. but. You can drive. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Yeah. It's like 50 bucks? Yeah. 30 bucks? Well, yeah, less than $50 normally depends on the car that you own, mm -hmm. basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's incredibly cheap. Incredibly cheap. So, um, you've got to understand also the economy here. Since uh, Maidan massacre, since um, February 2014, the economy has been in the toilet. It started then, it's still in the toilet. The Grievna went from 8 to 1 to 27 now, mm -hmm. uh, here in October 2017, uh, 27 to 1. And basically, wages dropped. Uh, Proportionally with that, yeah, uh -huh, yeah decrease uh -huh. in value. Uh, there was massive inflation of product inflation. And I did the math on, a, on an average basket of, of goods, kind of like a consumer price index, kind of like a, my own CPI, but yeah. just ballparky, uh, to, to help you understand how Ukrainian people have to live since the war started, my Don Masker after that. It's like you woke up, if you're American, and the next day, you know, you woke up and the dollar's now 18 cents. And you got to live like that. You got to pay your rent. You got to buy food. You got to pay for your children. Yep, that's how they live. Mm. Uh, so it's tough times here. Tax. Yeah. Officially, the tax rate, income tax rate, in 2017, according, uh, you can Google it, is 18 percent. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to people here and how it actually works here, do people pay taxes? Most of the time, no. <laughs> Most of the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost nobody here pays income tax. In fact, businesses here, they have two bank accounts. The corporate bank account, which they put a little bit of money into, uh, and then their personal bank account, the director's personal bank account, where mm -hmm. uh, they funnel most of the money. In our country, we call that tax evasion. And it's a federal indictable offense in Canada and America. You can spend 10 years in jail for here. Here, it's normal now. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Uh, so we're not condoning this uh, by any means. Uh, we're just telling you that's it's the way it is. It's the way it is. It's mm -hmm. the way everybody. That's why the roads are terrible. They have mm, no public services to speak of. Um, very poor quality. Well, poor quality. Yeah. Poor quality. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, taxes is the other thing. Um, if you want to unplug for your, from your country and become a non-resident in your country, uh, then you know you pay Ukrainian taxes. So if you're an honest uh, uh, guy, you pay 18% on your income here, and uh, it's a huge plus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next plus. You're surrounded by beautiful women. Oh, it's true. There's runway models everywhere. Uh, uh. Uh, and, you know, when you're in your relationship, as we are, it's just uh, beautiful scenery to enjoy. Every, every man, I think... Mm, it becomes normal. It, it's normal, and mm. it's, it's nice to look at beautiful, attractive women everywhere. So that wraps up the pros. Um, I mean, there's other pros, but those are the main ones. Mm. Let's switch over to the cons, the downside of living in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The service sucks. <laughs> It's not the biggest one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're stuck I mean, on that? No. Well, yes, I am. Because I've been living here four years and I'm, yeah, Ukrainian I'm used to it um, now. I still don't agree with it. I still don't accept it. Mm -hmm. But what I have learned about their culture is that you, you uh, reduce your criticism of it because you accept that's the way it is. Well, you either do accept it or, you, or it drives you up the wall, yeah. drives you batty. Yeah. So it's your choice. Uh, yeah. I don't like to be driven batty, so I accept it, mm. as do you. Mm. Uh, we, we, uh, we blend in pretty well. You yeah. and I. Uh, I, I think some guys don't. If you're on the capricious side uh, and uh, you got to have everything your own way, then it might be a little bit challenging. But uh, the biggest con, I think, would you agree, it's the medical system. Well, uh, whether you want to call it a con, if you allow yourself to be conned. Mm -hmm. No, no, the big, biggest oh, negative. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Medical uh, system. Yeah. Scares the bewillies out of me. Yeah, yeah. It's Soviet era. That's all that's to it. Yeah. Um, there is the more modern, there is the, the better facilities, but they're, they're only in the major capital cities. Uh, major capital cities, the major cities. Yeah, Kiev, Odessa, you've yeah. got all yeah. kinds of private. You've got the uh, British hospital, you've got the American hospital. Mm. Uh, where you'll have closer to American level prices, but you'll have all the best equipment, the best uh, foreign doctors. Yep, yep. Uh, so if something, uh, but you know, guys that have a major health concern, um, you want to have really good insurance. Good insurance, that's a big tip, yep. yeah. Um, foreign insurance, uh, and uh, be tapped into the foreign hospitals. Live either in Odessa or Kiev, yeah. uh, if you have some major health concerns. And the other thing is, of course, that you can, you know, uh, it's part of Europe, so it's easy to jump orders here, from here. It is, but when you're having a heart attack, hard to get on a plane. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so biggest con, medical system. Uh, you got to understand that it is Soviet bloc era hospitals here. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the ones that everybody uses, you know, the Ukrainian people use, mm -hmm. uh, the public hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the x-ray machine when I broke my leg here, it, yeah. it was like from the 1930s. Uh, my, my lead vest was th this thick. <laughs> it must be pumping out the radiation. He's exaggerating, 1940s. Uh, 1942, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, but it's cheap like Borscht. Absolutely. Uh, I had an x-ray and my leg was in a cast in one hour after walking into the hospital, or uh, limping into the hospital, and it cost me, I think it was a whopping $8. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I got a, um, I got an MRI, which back in the States would be about two grand. Uh, it was about $50. So, um, you can go to the private clinics, private hospitals, and it's still way, way, way cheaper than if you have to pay for medical in any other Western country. Mm -hmm. So, there's public and private. Uh, we spoke about the high-end private ones, like the American Hospital and the British, yep. the British Hospital in Kiev. But there's also public hospitals all over smaller cities like Sumy, yep. uh, Poltava, Kharkov, yep. and um, they are better quality equipment. The doctors are still the same because uh, they work in the public and the private. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, most uh, most expats go to the private yeah. uh, healthcare system. So that's the biggest negative um, by far. Uh, because it's your life. <laughs> uh, it's, and, scary. Uh, it's scary. It's <laughs> scary. Uh, the next biggest uh, negative, I would say, corruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to learn the do's and don'ts of corruption here. It's systemic. It exists. It's part of culture. Mm -hmm. It's part of society. It's part of everything. 
uh, it, it will touch you very quickly uh, when you move here. So you have to know uh, what the boundaries are, what the do's and don'ts are, otherwise you could get yourself into trouble, would you mm -hmm. say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. gotta gotta go with the flow. That's the the big answer to it. Yeah, uh, accept that it's there, and if it starts happening to you, you just gotta accept whatever's thrown at you. It's the best way to deal with it. Yeah. Best way to deal with it. Yeah, good mm. advice. Again, you need a wingman. Really, uh, better to know somebody that lives here and mm. and, and mm. get. Uh, Get the do's and don'ts from them. Yeah, and uh, contacts, you need connections and contacts yeah, here. You know, the problem is that it's, it's so ingrained into the culture that yeah. you know, it starts at ground level and works its way all the way up yeah. as well. So yeah. It touches everybody hmm. uh, from... <laughs> the cleaner in the Soviet era hospital right through to yeah. you know, the yeah. doctor in the public hospital system. Yeah, to the doctors, to the, to the lawyers, to the judges, to the up, up, up from that. Everybody. Uh, everything is for sale in Ukraine. There's three ways of getting anything done. There's official channels. There's official channels with bribe to make it go quicker. And then there's outright... Uh, under the table. Under the table. Outright mm -hmm. bribe. Outright dealing with mafia. Um, yeah, so uh, we could talk forever on just that point, yeah. uh, but let's move on. <laughs> well, I just want to point out one thing. The good okay. part about it is um, usually once you've dealt with it, it goes away, and it does go away, usually, mm -hmm. usually, um, unless for some reason you've drawn further attention to yourself. Yeah, if you've stepped on some big toes, you never want to do that. Yeah. Uh, trust us on that one. Never want to step on big toes. Mm. Uh, it can be dangerous. Uh, what, what do we talk about maybe banking? Oh, huh, okay. Uh, Ukrainian banks, nobody trusts them here because they have failed mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. They have the equivalent to an F, we have the FDIC, well in America, uh, that insures bank deposits up to $150,000, it is today. Here it's uh, $5,000 per bank account, right? Well, it's Grivna equivalent, so uh, at the moment it's 200000 Grivna, so whatever uh, the equivalent is. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, 2,000 divided by 27. Yeah. So um, you'd want to spread, if you're keeping money in Ukraine, spread it around on different banks, different accounts, and then it's insured. And then you're also creating the problem where uh, that bank might be failing and you don't know it. Um, yeah. yeah, but if it fails, you're covered. It's insured. And I'm only up to that 200,000. Yeah. But I still wouldn't count on it. No. It's Ukraine. And the other problem is if you've put in foreign currency, all right, you only get back. Grivna. Yeah, you only get back, only get back uh, Grivna. So mm. you come with dollars, uh, so you need to be aware of that. You're only getting Grivna when yeah. you take it out. My biggest advice would be to keep your money out of the country. Yeah, All right. that's the best advice. Any large sums you want to just bring in, that's what I was just going to say, bring in what you're going to spend in a given finite period, whether it's six months, depending on your budget, mm. uh, bring it in. You can Western Union it, it in. Yep. Get a friend or family to send you via Western Union. Yep. I think their limit is about fifteen thousand per year. Yeah, Western but Union. but also by all means, open a local bank account if you're going to come here regularly Absolutely. and live here, and just transfer directly from your home bank account to that uh, Ukraine bank account. Yeah, you can uh, wire funds yeah. uh, from any country into your account. And it's usually the cheapest way, actually. Uh, well, yeah. I find Western Union is cheaper than wire from Canada. Wire from Canada is setting me back a hundred bucks per wire uh, dollars. Well, I found it the other way. Huh, from me. okay. Yeah. yeah, and you're from Australia, I'm from Canada, so a little bit different depending on your mm -hmm. country. Have the coolest, best app uh, on your smartphone. Uh, you can transfer money on the app, you can pay people. <coughs> uh, it's super slick, super cool. Yeah, so, Pivot Bank is the biggest bank here in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and speaking of corruption, I mean, the... Uh, the, the owner and director of Private Bank. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's was just, just been collared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> caught uh, uh, lending himself 140, I think, billion, billion dollars. dollars the, biggest, yeah. Yeah. the biggest accounts receivable there. So mm -hmm. it was just federalized yeah. this yeah. year. Uh, yeah, so don't, um, don't keep too much money here. Uh, keep it at home. Bring it in a little. When you need it. Yeah. 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 The other two uh, things I'll say about on the con side is language barrier. You know, if you don't speak Russian or Ukrainian, which uh, what Western guy does, I haven't mm -hmm. met one yet. Well, no, I haven't met a couple. Uh, but yeah, you, you should try to learn the language because mm -hmm. it is difficult to uh, mesh into this society if you don't. Yeah. Very few people speak English here. 
Well, they're embarrassed to speak English, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Um, it's part of their educational system now where they're all learning English, um, but that's generations to come yet before that starts to, you know, yeah. um, show itself. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting point because um, most uh, in the school systems here, you're taking English right from grade one. Yep. Uh, so they've been taught English, they write English, and they understand to a pretty decent level, but speaking is difficult for yes. most Ukrainian people. Yeah. And they're embarrassed to do it, too. They are. They're, they're shy to do it, mm. and if you can get them to, to, practice, to try to practice with you. But, but, the, but the, the point is, they pick it up really quick. Mm. Quicker yeah. than we pick up Russian. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, but, you know, the point is, it is a con in living here, because you do get kind of lonely, and you miss your own culture, your own people, speaking your own language. And food. And food, yeah, food's a drawback. There's no ethnic food here to speak of, uh, other than pizza. Well, there is. Not much. There is, but not good. <laughs> not good quality, yeah, yeah. Not, not tasty. Um, uh, but, you know, so you'll develop a, in time your own sphere of, of English-speaking friends, expats and what, and yeah. what have. So it's definitely um, something that you can overcome. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do want to integrate into the culture, you know, the Ukrainian culture, um, it... it it's something that's available to you as well, you know, uh, yeah. and there's people that want to come to live here that want to do that And that's great, you know, that's going to help them no end. Absolutely. But absolutely. it's a hard road. It's a very hard road to follow. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard nut to crack, but um, I will say Ukrainian people um, They are open and warm. It's just that you've got to you've got to make it into their uh, tight circle their, yeah. their their trusted circle if yeah. you will yeah. a family and friends yep. and then they're open Yep. trusting when you make it in. And funny. And funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're good people, good, wholesome people, yep. I would say. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And making money. It's a big con if you don't have a retirement plan that sustains you and you've got to come here and work. It's difficult <laughs> because the salaries are so low here. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. you know? um, what about, uh, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, I will say there's a lot of, I see a lot of business opportunities here. Uh, if, if you want to start your own business, uh, but be careful. You need to know that uh, corruption is going to touch you. You'll get a knock on the door eventually if you do have a successful business, and you'll have to pay somebody so that you don't have problems, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, but yeah, there is, because democracy is new here, um, there's a lot of small business opportunity that uh, Ukrainian people, they don't have the same mindset. They don't have that democratic, democratic um you know, capitalistic mindset that we do in the it's West. It's new to them. It's new yeah. to them. Yeah. 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 Mm. So it just means there's lots of opportunity. At the end of the day, though, it's a great experience, wouldn't you say, Colin? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for the culture being the way that they are, the door wouldn't be open for entrepreneurs, import exporters, or something like that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're taking advantage of, of a situation uh, to your advantage. Yeah. It's true. It's the land of milk and honey. Lots of beautiful ladies, lots of single ladies. You can come, take your time, meet your other half, and then live here full-time or part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what we didn't speak of is that good girls often don't want to move Absolutely. away they from don't. Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter what country you're talking about, they don't want to leave their country because mm -hmm. that's their culture, that's their families, you know, that's yeah. everything they know. Yeah. Uh, they don't speak English language, so yeah. it's difficult for them to leave. Many, many, many reasons. So mm. uh, it's actually a huge advantage to you if you will live here full-time or part-time to get yeah. a good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good luck, guys.